talk of a currency war is refusing to die down after global finance chiefs meeting in Washington just couldn't agree what to do about it. Well, fresh from those talks is Raghavan Sitharaman. He's the CEO of Qatar Stoa Bank, and he joins me now in the studio. Thank you so much for coming back. Now, we were just speaking a couple of months ago, and I remember you saying, well, you know, I'm concerned about the way the world is going and the risk of a double-dip recession. You've just come back from Washington. Are you more worried now than you were three months ago? Absolutely. The same trend continues. As you rightly said, currency war, contentious issues between the developed world and developing economies. Quantitative easing is one factor. Administering the exchange rate is another factor. There is no character and commitment in the global governance. That's the result of what you have seen. And there's no also wanting to speak to each other, I guess. This is what really Washington has showed us. Absolutely. There is a political divergence. There are reasons to believe this is going to be a huge struggle. In real order, the prudential risks are increasing. G20 wanted inclusive growth. Essentially, the political agenda was dictated by advanced economies. There is no consensus into the macro prudential risk framework. That's what the result is all about. So do you think that a double dip recession is now practically unavoidable? It's real. It's real. And we are not sending the right signal by not accepting the, the truth. Convergence of economics and politics has to operate in terms of global governance. What has happened is politics precedes economics. That's wrong. We need economics to precede politics in case if you want global growth. But how do you change that? Because we do have a situation, for example, where you have the U.S. and China blaming each other for their global imbalances. You empower the mechanism like BAS, IMF, again, the, the, the overall uh, the Basel recommendations. Bring in substance to economics than politics. Then you can iron out the differences. Otherwise, the, the struggle continues. But the problem with the IMF is that it doesn't actually have any powers. I mean, it's there to, to facilitate Transform. dialogue. Transform. See, you have a fixed agenda, and it goes on the same tape record. What you need to articulate is clearly recognizing the prudential risk and start setting initiatives which are inclusive. It means universal framework in terms of monetary policy, universal framework in terms of overall recovery initiatives. That has not happened. We took decisions in Pittsburgh and London that's not been implemented still. And if these don't get implemented, what does it mean for growth in the Middle East? Are you concerned that actually with these currency wars going on around the world, it's your region that will suffer possibly the most? It is possible. See, currency war is real. See, currency market is bigger than stock market as well as commodity market. Now, we are parity linked dollars, so we have a direct reflection. At the same time, we are real economy. The real economies are going to support the recovery mechanism. Because commodity driven, because oil prices are costing over $80, dollar is getting weak and people hedge the risk by buying commodities, we have long-term sustainable growth prospects in block. And we have seen the market reflection in terms of capital as well as debt procurement off late. Mr. Sitharaman, thank you so much for joining us. Rather passionate appeal there, really, for governments across the world to put economics before politics.